In this two-part video series, I will share with you how to start an asynchronous process VI and how to send and receive data from it. In part one of this series, I'll share some of the basic principles and concepts with launching dynamic process VIs. In part two, I will share how to do bidirectional communication with process VIs and how to use reentrant clones. First off, what is an asynchronous process VI? This is essentially a VI which can execute independently and in parallel to other VIs. A process VI can be started and a process VI can be stopped. Also, we may have a way to send and receive data from the process using a communication pathway. This is not necessary, and you can have a process VI that can just start, execute on some task, and complete all on its own without having to have any communication from another process. There are two main ways that you can start a process VI. There's a static way, which is basically of putting the process VI in a diagram. But the problem here is that the, the VI must be chosen at edit time. In other words, when you develop the code, you, will, you need to know what process VI you need and how many of them, and put it on the diagram. And because they're placed statically on, uh, on a calling VI, when the calling VI loads, all the process VIs are automatically loaded into memory. So it's difficult or almost impossible to unload a process VI that's statically placed on the diagram of a caller. The dynamic approach uses the run VI method. And this is the one that we'll be discussing in this video. You can load and unload a process on demand, and you can decide which process VI to load at runtime. Loading and unloading allows you to conserve memory because you only load the VI into memory when you need it, and then you can unload it from memory when you're done. And you don't need to know exactly which process VI you, would, you want to load at runtime. Here we have a VI that I've created to show you uh, how to do a dynamic call of a process VI. We've broken down the basic components of how to launch a process VI dynamically for demonstration purposes. Each section is enclosed in a case structure with a button to activate that case. There are several basic steps to launching a dynamic VI. Quickly going through them, there's opening the VI reference, executing the run VI method, potentially aborting the VI, and then closing the VI reference. Let's take a look at the open VI reference function. This function takes a path input, and the path we enter here is the actual path to the VI that we want to launch dynamically. As you can see here, I've just entered a relative path. When you enter a relative path like this, it takes it to assume relative to the caller. So it's going to look for dynamic.vi and look for it in parallel on disk in the same folder as the main.vi. Um, and also you can write the absolute path to the file. For example, you can write c colon backslash dynamic.vi if that's where the VI exists. We don't really need to wire anything else to this uh, open VI reference for it to work. Now on this wire, there's a VI reference. We wire that straight into this method called run VI. It's important to set this wait until done constant to false. So this run VI method can execute in two modes. One mode is blocking and one is non-blocking. If we set this constant to true, then it's in blocking mode. It means that when LabVIEW comes along and executes the run VI method, LabVIEW will go off and execute the VI specified in this reference, and it'll start the VI running. LabVIEW will sit here on this method and wait till the VI's, that parallel VI, the dynamic.vi, has finished executing. Once that VI has finished executing, LabVIEW will continue executing the code after the run VI method. So that's what we call by blocking. Now we don't want this because we want to be able to launch the VI in parallel, have it execute while our main code executes its own, uh, does its own work. So we want both the main VI and the dynamic VI to run in parallel independently. So in order to do that, we have to set this constant to false, meaning that this method will not wait for the dynamic VI to finish, it'll actually execute the run VI method and return immediately, and in parallel, it will actually launch the dynamic VI. The abort VI method is uh, a pretty accrued approach to stopping the dynamic uh, VI that's, that's been launched. 
However, it does work and it'll actually immediately stop the dynamic VI regardless of what state that VI is in. You have to be careful when using this so that if the dynamic VI is executing some hardware communication that's critical to your process, then you don't really want to execute the abort VI unless uh, it's something that's uh, harmless. We'll see in another example how you can actually gracefully exit a dynamic VI without having to abort it. Finally, when you're done any kind of work with this dynamic VI and you want to finish and complete your program, you should close the VI reference. Closing the VI reference actually removes the VI from memory and it releases any resources that that VI may have opened within LabVIEW. So let's take a look and see how this works. We're ex we'll execute the VI. Now I'm going to open up the VI hierarchy panel so that we can actually see what happens when the dynamic VI reference is opened. So right now you can see in my hierarchy, I have my main VI, which is running. I have my computer application instance, and I have my project, because all this code is inside of a LabVIEW project. If I go over here and click Open VI Reference, you'll see that LabVIEW has taken this VI and it's loaded it into memory. It's not actually executing the VI, it's just loading it into memory. So let's take a look at this front panel. So I just double click the icon in the hierarchy, and now it's showing here it's not running, but it's in memory. Let me close that now. So closing the panel does not remove it from memory, it's still in memory. Notice that it's not being called anywhere on this main VI. The only thing that keeps this VI in memory is the fact that we've opened a reference to it and we have not closed the reference to it. So if I close the reference, you'll see that the VI leaves memory. So let me open the reference again. Now I'll run the VI. And I can actually abort the VI as well. And I can manually close the panel, close the reference, and then the VI leaves memory. Now I'm able to do this because if you'll notice, the reference is actually kept in memory. While this main VI um, is running, this VI reference that I've opened is still active and in memory. And I can do that by using this shift register. So now, um, one option that I haven't actually mentioned yet is this input on the run VI method call, called auto dispose reference. Now, the auto dispose reference uh, allows you to do something special. It allows you to, to open a VI reference. And when we set auto dispose reference to true, it allows LabVIEW to disconnect this VI reference from the main UI and pass control of it to the dynamic VI. So that means that we don't actually have to close the reference. LabVIEW will automatically close the reference for us when the dynamic VI uh, stops executing. So let's take a look at this approach. Go back to our VI hierarchy. Now let's open the VI reference. Same as before, the VI gets loaded into memory. We'll run the VI, stop the VI, and now you'll see that after we stop the VI, the actual VI left memory. Because we had this auto dispose reference enabled, so now the VI left memory automatically. We don't need to close the reference. In fact, if we try to close the reference now that the VI has left memory, you'll notice that LabVIEW will give us an error because the reference is invalid. So having the auto dispose reference is nice uh, in instances where we don't really care about keeping the VI in memory. In, in the instances where you do want to keep the VI in memory, then auto dispose reference should be set to false. However, you do need to make sure that you keep that reference in memory somehow. And the easiest way is using some form of shift register. Now I'm going to show you one more thing here. Um, I'm going to show you a, a way that you can pass data to a dynamic VI, because as you can see, if we don't have it on the diagram, there's no way to wire things to that VI to send data to it. 
So one method that we can use here is using this invoke node and the control value set uh, method. This method operates on a VI reference, which we have. And we can actually, um, what we, and we also need is the name of a control on the front panel of that VI. So here our control is called my string control, and we can write things to the front panel. So let me open the VI reference. Look at the hierarchy here, and I'll actually open this VI. Even though it's not running, we can still, we still have access to it because we have the VI reference open. So I can go back into here. I've entered some text. If I say write text, you'll see that I've actually written this text from the front panel to this dynamic VI, and all I've used was the VI reference and this method called control value set. One last thing I'd like to show you in this example is the actual diagram of the dynamic VI. So let's take a look at that. As you can see on the diagram, uh, there's not much to it. All there is is a while loop to keep the VI uh, executing, and it's wired to the stop button where we can stop it. Uh, one thing that is special, however, on this VI is that we have the front panel open property at the beginning and at the end. Now there's a reason we have this. Uh, because we want to show the front panel, we have to execute a property on it to make the front panel visible and then hide it. The reason why we do this is because when you run a VI dynamically using the run VI method, certain things get disabled, uh, lab you disable certain things on the VI properties. If you go to the VI properties and navigate to the Navigate to the window appearance. The show front panel when called and close afterwards if originally closed feature does not work anymore. So the run VI method, when it executes on the VI, doesn't trigger a show front panel when called for the VI. So in order for us to open the front panel, we have to actually do a little bit of work and use this property to open the front panel and then close it. Now there's one more thing, and the last thing, I'd like to show you in this video in regards to dynamic VIs is how to build LabVIEW executables that call dynamic VIs or use dynamic VIs. I'll pull up our example that we were working before, and here you'll see I've created a build specification. If we open this up, and we take a look at the source files, we'll see that we have our main VI specified as a startup VI and our dynamic VI specified in the dynamic VIs list. And let's just remove them here. And basically to add them, we just click on the files, click these arrows, and this goes into the startup VIs and the dynamic VI goes into the dynamic VIs. Basically, that's all we need to do. And then we can build it. If we run our little executable here, you'll see that we can open the VI reference, run the VI, write some text to the front panel, so it's actually working. And it's running asynchronously. And we can stop the VI and stop the main app. Thank you for watching this video. In part two of this tutorial, I will share with you how to extend the techniques shown here to launch re-entrant process VIs and how to, how to perform bi-directional communication. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful and gave you some ideas that you can use in your own LabVIEW software development.